Hey guys, myself Dr. Simran and I'm up here with a new video which is very exciting one because you all might be familiar with the new scoring system of USMLE Step 1 that is pass fail. Many of you might be shocked because you are you might be midway between your preparation and you might be wondering what would happen if you would you know keep on studying and if the scoring system is uh, pass or fail what's your uh, future basically the uncertainty uh, has uh, risen now uh, as I already posted on Instagram that uh, step to CK is going to be the main game changer after the uh, scoring change so how because step one is going to be pass or fail now the only thing that you can do well in uh, you know is step to ck step to ck it is very important that you score really high in step to ck now this video is about how to score more than 260 on usmle step to ck you have to focus on step to ck like anything now step one you know uh, the which used to be the most important exam for usmle has been sidelined now usmle step to ck has all the attention so let's see how to study for USMD step to CK to secure a score of more than 260. Now, as I've already told you that USMD step to CK is going to be the game changer after the official announcement of step one pass fail score reporting in 2022. Now, I want to test uh, tell you what all subjects are being tested in step to CK. First and the foremost, most important uh, subject is internal medicine. Next comes psychiatry, next comes ethics, biostats, ophthalmology, ENT, surgery, pediatrics, trauma and op scanning which is also really important for step to CK. Now out of all of them the internal medicine is the most important subject you know on which you need to focus on. So internal medicine is the most important subject. After that you know the most important uh, subject is psychiatry. You must be familiar, familiar all those who have already taken the step one they have seen that psychiatry is really important you know so you have to focus on psychiatry then you have to focus on obs gyne then biostats and uh, ethics and uh, so on so uh, the uh, basically i want to tell the hierarchy the first is internal medicine then comes psychiatry then comes the obs gyne then comes the pediatric surgery ient now remember that USMLE step 2 CK now let me change the color of the marker remember that USMLE step 2 CK is testing your clinical knowledge you should be happy that you know uh, you gonna take the exam which test your clinical knowledge rather than just facts I, I don't like exams which test your facts now when you are given a particular case history you are required to know what so I am going to tell you really important thing that you are required to know the diagnosis, the next best step, the most appropriate treatment and the treatment side effects. Now coming on to the individual tab. First when we talk about the diagnosis, how will you arrive at a diagnosis? Now to arrive at a diagnosis, you should know the signs and symptoms of each disease perfectly. Uh, supposing any disease uh, any patient comes to you you know he gives his uh, signs and symptoms you should be well familiar with all the common diseases which are prevalent in USA so that you can arrive at a diagnosis now the next best step how will you know the next best step to know the next best step you should know about all the relevant investigations for that disease any disease you have to know which is the best investigation for that disease and which is the most definite one for example for the cancers you get to know what type of cancer and the staging by biopsy so biopsy is considered a gold standard you know now next coming on to the most appropriate treatment most appropriate treatment as well as the treatment side effects you should be well versed with pharmacology now here they will test your pharmacology again don't think if you have uh, given you know step one that then you won't be tested in step two ck about the areas that which are tested in the step one you uh, you should know that step two ck test many topics many principles you know from step one so it is not a good decision to take step one step two ck before step one you should always take step one before step two ck you have to read every disease as if the patient is in front of you and you have to save his life this is very important unless until you do like this you won't be serious enough for your studies and as a doctor you know that you have to save lives 
so you have to study as if a patient is sitting in front of you now whenever you encounter a disease just jot down the most peculiar signs and symptoms that makes the disease stand out from the rest of the diseases now uh, for example i want to tell you if the patient comes with a butterfly type rash like this and uh, there is serositis and there is arthritis these peculiar features point to the sle systemic lupus erythematosus now when i talk about the next best step you have to know the lab test you have to know the invasive test as well as the radiological test also remember they require you to know the ct scans they require you to know the x rays they require you to know the mris how you uh, it's your duty to know how the normal ct scan looks like normal x ray looks like then only you will get to know what's abnormal if you only you if uh, if you know what's normal then only you'll uh, be able to make out what's abnormal now remember the first investigational step is usually never an invasive test this uh, goes for your clinical practice also that is the first step that uh, the first test that you going to order uh, is never going to be an invasive test because uh, we have to you know stay away from the invasive test as uh, as much as possible we have to ease the life of a patient so you have to you know uh, keep in the mind that the first test is going to be a non invasive test you have to think about the simple test first now coming on to the treatment part for infectious diseases i want to tell you that you have to read the microbiology from first state for step 1 first state for step 1 is such an excellent book i cannot emphasize enough on that microbiology is given in such a simple language and the whatever is given in first state for microbiology that is more than enough remember if you master the microbiology you will master the infectious diseases and infectious diseases is really important now i have made uh, the different tables so that you can understand it better now before starting uh, you have to do some research you have to start with the diseases which are very common in usa you have to google it now try to form the mind maps i'm telling you my study technique how i used to remember things you know uh, you will get different youtube videos and they will be uh, students will be telling you different learning techniques but uh, what worked for me was mind maps basically i used to write the main disease in focus at the center and then i used to make a map like this basically for example cystic fibrosis the symptom that the patient will come with is recurrent pulmonary infection malabsorptive uh, features now what do you need to remember in cystic fibrosis is that it, it is f502 gene deletion which would lead to abnormal ftr gene which would lead to decreased chloride in the cell then there would be compensatory sodium reabsorption and as you know that along with sodium there is a water reabsorption due to the secondary active transport then this leads to the thick mucus in the lungs and gi tract and hence it leads to recurrent pulmonary infection and malabsorption so you have to know the whole cycle how the disease works in this way no one can beat you i trust me that if you uh, learn things like this no one can you know uh, challenge you you'll uh, master the disease in such a way now coming on to another thing uh, if you want to you know learn medicine in a really good way then i suggest you to opt for harrison's algorithm you must all be familiar with the harrison textbook harrison textbook the latest edition is right now 20th edition you can download the ebook or get their hard copy you should always rely on the diagnostic algorithms given in the harrison textbook of surgery like i have uh, copy pasted uh, one algorithm you can see the sample how nicely they have you know mentioned each and every step now this will you know uh, help you to sharpen your clinical skills also and this way you will uh, be able to learn the next best step also so see if suspected or documented hypoglycemia is there you would you know think of diabetes or no diabetes if diabetes is there what would you do if there is no diabetes what would be your next step in this way you're going to learn how to proceed further now you can be a good physician only if you know what should be the next step and you can easily arrive at a diagnosis now coming on to the next thing now coming on to the relative investigations know the relative important radiological images like x ray ct scan mris these are more useful in orthopedics it is uh, so very obvious that orthopedics 
uh, have all those MRI images, those X-ray images, in which you need to know uh, what kind of fracture or what kind of pathology is there, or respiratory cases as well. Uh, for example, pleural effusion, and uh, there would be uh, tension pneumothorax. These uh, may very common uh, clinical scenarios. Now, know about all the fractures, how they look on X-rays. See these things i'm telling you because they'll help you to become a good doctor and this is our main goal you know now coming on to the x-rays how to learn you have to learn how the normal x-ray will look like see this is a very nice diagram which i have explained i got it from google images basically so uh, this is a very nice uh, uh, annotation which is explaining how the normal x-ray will look like for example this is clavicle now this is the right hilum these are the posterior ribs this is the left hilum this is the paraiotic line and this is the costophrenic angles which you see to rule out the pleural effusion because if these are obliterated then you suspect an effusion this is the right hemidiaphragm this is the left hemidiaphragm this is the gastric bubble this is the liver so in this way you have to read in such a uh, good way that you know what's normal and in this way you will get to know what's abnormal now this is the normal abdominal CT scan this also I got it from Google images like you know you can see how aorta looks like and this is the left kidney they have marked this is the right kidney this is the liver they have demarcated you know this is the superior mesenteric vein this is the superior mesenteric artery this is the left renal vein this is the duodenum you have to know everything this is the IVC now coming on to the next point which is about CVS so how to proceed with CVS you have to read first aid for step one then you have to watch the osmosis video i cannot emphasize enough how nice the osmosis videos are these are so simplified and they you know explain the topic in such a simple way that you don't get uh, you know bored also and it is a very interactive method to learn you have to watch osmosis osmosis videos to consolidate your concepts as well as after that after the first two steps you have to come on to the u word u word is very 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 important for step 2 CK because this is the main source for step 2 CK as I've already told you first it was the main source for step 1 for step 2 CK U word is the game changer so U word now a cut short approach to study medicine this is a really important uh, table the first step is read the topic from first aid for USMLE step 1 okay uh, this way you will be able to uh, get an idea simple idea of the disease you are talking about now the second step is read the concurrent guidelines from uptodate.com this is really really important you can get a subscription of uptodate which is uh, basically the most updated scientific data available now trust me you will get the maximum benefit uh, by getting the up-to-date subscription for example a new triple therapy for cystic fibrosis has been developed and there are many many more updates which you need to know and which are only given in up-to-date and the next third step would be to come on to the u word this is a very simple approach in this way you will be able to score really good now coming on to the another algorithm from harrison's basically you can see how nicely they have explained each and every step and this is the most simplified and you know most useful trick to know the next best step and most important diagnostic step the treatments as well now Harrigan, Harrison textbook has most amazing algorithms and trust me if you just read the basic algorithms of the common diseases you will have no problem in arriving at a diagnosis or coming on to the next step of management now see I have drawn this lever diagram which is a very very cute and interactive way to learn you have to you know uh, make a habit to have a pictorial memory pictorial memory I mean to say is that you can draw cool uh, diagrams cute little diagrams in this way you see I've drawn these kidneys you can these are adrenals and if there is any pathology you can mark it that like that if there is hydronephrosis you can draw it like a swollen kidney so 
my main aim is to uh, you know tell you that interactive way to learn is the best way in this way you will always remember the stuff i have drawn this lever diagram and you know uh, if you need to know the lever anatomy this is a very simple way to know this is the right lower of the liver this is the left lower of the liver this is the lateral segment medial segment posterior segment these this is very important to learn the anatomy in this way you will master anatomy as well try to make the diagrams in order to increase the visual memory this is the trick now coming on to the orb scan orb scan is really important when i talk about the orb scan u word and acog this is really really important acog guidelines you can get it online any change in the new guidelines you know uh, which uh, this this thing is really high yield i cannot emphasize enough for example there had been uh, recent you know updates about the uh, group b streptococcal infection in pregnancy uh, and who needs to get the treatment and who needs to you know get screened for uh, some ailment so this uh, all the latest updates you going to get at acog website for pediatrics pediatrics i want to tell you that u word and up to date basically these are the main sources for pediatrics for psychiatry psychiatry is really important for psychiatry and biostatistics you need to use the first aid for usmle step 1 now i have taken few tables from the first aid just to let you know how nicely they have mentioned you know the milestones how nicely and you can you know easily learn from them the milestones now this table is about the sensitivity and specificity and all those formulas you need to know all the important formulas which are given in first aid now for surgery you should use u word you can use emboss i i cannot emphasize enough on emboss too for orthopedics basically like they have really cool diagrams explaining nerve injuries and fractures emboss is a really good platform to learn and they have a medical library also in which you can search any topic and get a great content basically i searched nerve injuries and i was you know impressed looking at the amount of the content and the quality of the content given in the uh, emboss and i was so easily able to you know register the different nerve injuries given they have explained with the help of the diagrams that which nerve goes where and what would lead uh, what would be the symptoms if there would be a nerve injury or any nerve injury uh guys i hope you like this video and uh, follow me on facebook my facebook account name is usmle star uh, on which i feature very high yield content on instagram also the name is usmle star and on tumblr i am with the name of med student uh, i wanted to show you what i all uh, stuff i post on instagram and facebook basically i post my study post uh, then i post the uh, step 1 or step 2 schedules also time tables also time wise and many of the people have you know uh, are being benefited with these time tables there is a medical update series on my page also on which i post the latest updates available on the up to date also and there are few notes also which i uh, update on my page uh, this is my uh, first aid and uh, i feature it on my facebook as well as instagram page as well you can see the images and trust me if you follow my pages you will definitely be motivated enough to study so i had started a whiteboard series also on which you know i used to write the most important steps and how you need to proceed further with the diagnosis this is really important and this all has been taken from u word u word is such a important resource i cannot emphasize enough so thank you and stay tuned